Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Hello, Welcome to The Savage Nation. This perplexes me to no end. Why do non-Mexican Americans in America make such a big deal of this minor holiday in Mexico? They don't even celebrate it in Mexico. Only stupid white drunks in the suburbs who need an excuse to guzzle beer and eat bad food. Uh, play the music again. I want to make sure they heard. This is a minor holiday in Mexico. And only here do the white fools make an issue of it. Uh, obviously because of the beer company advertisements that pushed it into the head that it's a day to get drunk. And since most Americans are drunks, anyway, this is another excuse to be a drunk for another day. There's a long story about what it is. It commemorates the Mexican Army's 1862 minor victory over a French army at the Battle of Puebla during the Franco-Mexican War. All right? But you got white Americans who make more of this holiday, Cinco de, Cinco de Mayo, than they do over their own Independence Day of July 4th. Not a big deal, but it's worth mentioning. Many people don't even know what Cinco de Mayo is. But they'll go celebrate. Oh, they're dancing in the streets already in America. Very multicultural. I guarantee all the schools in America make it a bigger holiday than July 4th. I guarantee you. To all of my Mexican friends, congratulations on your victory over the French uh, in 1862. I really salute you for that. That was a real big battle. Of course, it was not a major strategic win in the overall war against the French, but it was a symbolic victory for the Mexican government, and it did bolster the little minor resistance movement. Then, years later, military support came from America, and it helped Mexico and France withdrew. And this is an interesting side note. The same year, 1862, I believe, Austrian Archduke Ferdinand Maximilian, who had been installed as Emperor of Mexico by Napoleon in 1864, would you believe it, was captured and executed by Juarez's forces. Now, that's interesting because I always liked Mexican music because it reminds me of German beer hall music. The, uh, there's certain elements. I never understood where the German music came from in the Mexican popular music of a certain time. It's no longer really there. I listen to Mexican music on my radio now. I find it much more interesting than chick music. I would rather listen to Mexican music than, than chick music that belongs in an elevator. Cinco de Mayo history. So there it is. That's the whole story. Thank you for listening. Good night and good luck. All right, turn it. No, that wouldn't be a bad commentary, a savage minute. I'm thinking eventually going from the long format three hours a day to a three-minute segment once a, once a day or something like that. That would, would have been my one segment for the day. It would have been controversial. People would not have understood it. Some would have understood it. Nobody would have gotten uh, AK-47s and body armor you know, and try to shoot up a, uh, a meeting. That's the difference between civilized people and throwbacks. That's all. Which brings us to the next point. This is an astonishing story that I'm about to tell you. It is an astonishing story that I'm about to tell you. There's a trade deal that the trader in the White House is trying to push right now with the help of the Republicans. They're all traders. This deal is such a sellout for America that even Harry Reid opposes it. I swear to God, this is something you'll never never believe in a million years. Harry Reid throws brakes on Obama trade push, is the headline on Fox News. My headline is a little different. Trade treason is what I call it. Senate Democratic leader Harry Reid is jamming up President Obama's push for a new comprehensive trade deal, saying he'll try to block it until the Senate tackles other hot-button issues. Now, what this trade deal is, no one really knows, but they kind of know. It's a sellout of the American worker by Obama and the Republicans. This is amazing. Think about what I'm saying to you. The Republicans under Obama and Obama, the Republicans and Obama, rather, want to give Asia a trade deal that will destroy us completely. And the only ones stopping it are the Democrats for reasons that are their own, probably because they have to go back to the workers in their communities and explain to them why they eroded the working man once again. 
But listen to this. Ha- you got to listen to this Senate leader, Mitch McConnell. You know, the gobbler, the guy who looks like a turkey with the gullet hanging down from the chin. This guy is one of the worst Benedict Arnolds in the history of America. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, the gobbler, urged his Republican colleagues to support Obama's trade push. And here's what he said. He said, of course, we've already heard of an attempt to stand in the way of the bipartisan effort to debate this legislation. We already heard of yet another effort to make a partisan stand against the bipartisan accomplishment that would help grow opportunities for our constituents. He means the lobbyists. The only opportunities that will grow are those pushed by the Better Business Bureau and the few companies that will benefit from this. You see, Obama is pushing a 12-nation agreement known as the TransPAC Partnership, which would open markets around the Pacific Rim to U.S. exports. On the face of it, that sounds good. But that's not exactly what it really is. Because to complete this deal... It's a little complicated, so I'll stop. I'll make it one sentence. To complete this deal, Obama has to win expanded negotiating authority from the U.S. Congress. And who is opposing him? Liberals and labor unions who say they fear the loss of American jobs. I'm with the liberals and labor unions on this. I'm totally opposed to the Republican big businessmen on this. I'm sorry. What, do I have to go party line? I'm not in the rush cartel. I call them as I see them. It's that simple. What do you want to talk about, the Texas shooting now? I did it yesterday. I did the best show in the history of the world. I did a better show in the Texas shooting than anyone in the history of radio could have done, which is why they didn't tackle it. They were afraid of it. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know how to handle it. I did a great show, and I was on the Alex Jones show. He has a great show. Very. Some call him conspiracy theorist. You know, what... A conspiracy theorist of 10 years ago is a mainstreamer today. You know that. Virtually everything that conspiracy theorists proposed 10 years ago was happening to the country. I'll give you four examples. You can give me some. Back when I was in radio in the 90s, mid-90s, we opposed NAFTA. We said it would destroy jobs in America. We said it would destroy factories in America. We said it would bring illegal aliens and drugs into America. Were we wrong or were we right? The North American Free Trade Agreement destroyed, decimated the industrial base of America, decimated us exported jobs, exported factories. We were not wrong. Remember the World Trade Organization, the WTO? Has that worked out for America? No. No, it's weakened American manufacturing. This is just a continuation of the weakening and hollowing out of Obama's secret trade pact. Do you know it's so secret right now that even Nancy Pelosi opposes it? I swear to God. The secrecy surrounding Obama's treasonous trade pact is such that the lawmakers who are allowed to look at the bill have to go into the basement of the building where it's uh, where the documents are hidden. They uh, cannot take their notes with them. They're not allowed to discuss the details with the of, with the public. Can you imagine a president as degenerate as this, a man as retrograde as this, a man as demonic as this, a man as fascistic as this, getting away with this? Sure, you can. Why? Because except for a few websites and a few radio shows, no one is telling you how demonic the man really is. The U.S. ran more than $50 billion in a trade deficit last month. $50 billion in one month, and this guy wants to give away what's left. You hear this? All right, you're not interested in this. I know know the emotional topics. I get it. I know what people call about. You want to talk more about the Texas shooting? What more do I have to say than I already said yesterday? Thank God for the Texas traffic cop who, despite the fact that he's being shot at by Muslims with machine guns. Ooh, did I say Muslims? Why did I have to say Muslims? Oh, that is so politically insensitive of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because they were doing it because they were Muslims. At least they said so, so maybe they were wrong. Anyway, the Muslims with machine guns came out blasting. Uh, And this guy had a handgun, shot them both dead with headshots. Bang, 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 bang. We don't know if it was two shots or four, but the Muslims with the machine guns went to the Sturgeons. They got the 72 Sturgeons they were promised. That's for sure. And we avoided a trial and we, we avoided a bloodbath. So that's all that has to be said. They're dead. And the secondary part of that story is that 
If you drive through Texas, I strongly advise you obey all traffic rules. Texas is not New York. Texas is not Baltimore. Texas is a world unto its own. It's more law-abiding. The people are safer. And they don't take crap from people who try to push them around. That's why they're called Texans. That's why liberals hate them. That's why we love them. And I want to thank you very much for listening. And good night again. See, that's show two. That would have been a second three-minuter. That actually was quite long. Now, today is a strange day for me. I had one of my weird dreams last night, which I'm reluctant to tell you. It's called the white elephant. You think I make these things up? No, you just have to take it on the face. Remember I did the white owl about two months ago? I even painted the white owl. One day you'll see what a rendition I did of the white owl. It's actually one of my better watercolors. Last night I dreamed about a white elephant that was blindfolded. And I'll tell you what I think the dream means the minute I return right here in the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Yeah, welcome back to the Savage Nation. I feel so good, it's frightening. Five minutes before the show, I almost didn't go on the air. Ask the guys. I'm suffering severe allergies. I popped an allergy pill, which I reluctantly take every 10, 20 days. I couldn't take it. All the jasmine's in bloom. I was just whacked after the bike ride. Then I took a rock star recovery. All of a sudden, the two combined. I'm suddenly full of energy. They said to me, God, that's incredible to see you go from down to up. I said, well, welcome to the club. I'm the moon man, the dark side and the light side. I am definitely the moon man. What a what a difference in feeling. Five to noon, when the show starts at five afternoon, I walked in the back of the green room. I almost wanted to lay on the couch and not get up. I almost threw in the towel. But I know the show must go on, so I never quit. Even the days I would write. See, here's the thing. The show itself invigorates me. Robert, the board operator, just said, the minute you hear that starting music, it changes the, the brain waves, and you're invigorated. It's why I'll never let go of radio. You know, if I'm still living and I don't have terrestrial, God forbid, that happens years later, I'll still be I'll be on the air somewhere. I'll just do a web show. Whatever I have to do, I will always be out there as long as I can, you know, cogently present my ideas. It'd be a shorter form. I was so excited yesterday doing the Alex Jones show. I didn't think I had the energy for it. I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited from TV and then radio that I, I'm thinking of doing a morning web show of my own, you know, a separate show that I get up in the morning and I'm in like a bathrobe, <laughs> bathrobe and a cup of coffee, just a fire. And I open the paper up and do like a half an hour to an hour of a web show to warm up for the radio show. That wouldn't be a bad thing. I would have to do that by subscription. It would only be a web-based thing. And I'm not a businessman. The truth is I'm not a good businessman. I I've done okay in life because I have a very smart family <laughs> in plain English. But, uh, the thing is, I don't know. I don't like I don't like organizing businesses. I, I don't like organizing, and I like performing. So Cinco de Mayo, play the mariachi music. I already lost them. They went somewhere else. They're on the Wallbangers channel now. I don't know. They want to listen to racism, this, that, Ferguson, Baltimore. I could care less. I'm so sick of it all, I'll be honest with you. Give me and I've said this before. They're never going to convert to Islam. I don't think you understand what I just said to you. Catholicism is so deeply rooted in the Hispanic people. Could you actually believe that Muslims are going to convert them to their religion? No. And I was on the beach down in, uh, I was near uh, Manhattan Beach in L.A. about a month ago, two months ago, standing on a boardwalk. It was actually the Hermosa Beach boardwalk. And I looked down on the beach and I saw the families, the white families, the black families, the Hispanic families, and I saw the men with their wives and children on that beach. And I looked at them. I just watched them leaning over the rail, you know, watching the world go by. I observe. And I had a good feeling about the future of America. I said, the family is so strong in the Hispanic culture. They're not going to let anyone rip their religion away from them because their religion is the glue that holds their family together. I don't think anyone's expressed that as succinctly as I have on the radio. I'm sure it's been written, 
I'm sure people have kind of suggested it. That's a good thing. I don't want to just sit here, everything's bad. Nothing's good, America's dead. I don't believe it, by the way. America is changing, America will change, everything changes, nothing remains the same. I get that. We're going through a huge social upheaval because of the demon in the White House. The least of our problems are the Hispanics, by the way. Do you know that the number one group of immigrants that he's bringing into this country are from China? Did you know that? That's also not a bad thing when you think about it. Uh, for a number of reasons. They're industrious, they're hardworking, they're very intelligent. They don't believe that if they perform jihad on this planet, they're going to get 72 sturgeons in the next world. The Asians don't believe in 72 sturgeons in heaven. No, sir. And they eat, they eat pork. That's almost an impossibility to convert them. So that's a good thing. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Elevating a woman on a pedestal, loving the woman, seeing her in an idealistic manner. Take a look at what's happened today. Look at the lyrics and the music today coming out of that culture. And tell me things have gotten better. Go ahead. I'll turn it off already. No one cares. But there is a penguin in that in the... Uh, in the album cover of the Penguins, three bonus tracks, the Penguins, and there is a penguin in the uh, on the record uh, label. Someone noticed a penguin, and I did the show yesterday, the web show, in the back of my studio here, where I broadcast from. I have a cabinet, and there's like a little penguin in the, in there. So I didn't even know where there was a penguin card, and the, someone saw the penguin. Then they saw my assistant walking around with a phone in the uh, in the picture frame. It looked like 1950s Hispanic Spanish television. <laughs> you know, I used to love TV in the 50s. Am I allowed to talk? Can I just talk instead of doing politics for a minute? I'm all over the map today, and I will get to the white elephant dream. Way back in the 50s, there were, you know, the early days of television, there was a Spanish language television show, El Perucho show in New York City. No one remembers this. And it was on one of the weird upper channels. You know, in those days, there were four channels. There was two, four, five. And if you're really an intellectual, you watched uh, nine or something like that. This was somewhere in the upper reaches, a little television station in New Jersey. And it was called the El Perucho Show. So my friend and I, we were nine, ten years old. We used to look forward to it every Saturday night because it was so amateurish. Sets would fall over. You talk about... Uh, 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 what happens when the costume, costumes break open? What do they call that today? Where something falls out from a woman? Costume, uh, what is it called, Robert? You know, when they perform and a suit breaks or the woman's wardrobe malfunction. It went on all the time. We used to watch it for the wardrobe, for the wardrobe malfunctioning. We hoped there was a wardrobe malfunction. We'd sit up laughing hysterically, watching sets fall over. You'd see a guy with a boom microphone coming off of the top. That was fun. That was fun television. Everything's so professional now, so sanitized, homogenized. You know, that sometimes I wish that we have a little more amateur hour. It'd be fun. 855-407-282. You could see that I'm not really focused on uh, the news. I've had it enough already. Pamela Geller, tomorrow she'll be forgotten. She had her 14 minutes of fame. That's all. There's only two dead from this experience. All right, so she did it. That's all. She wanted to show what's under the surface of the Islamic community. So she showed it. Now she's a, a star now. Martha Washington can't get enough of her. Martha Washington cannot get enough of Pamela Geller. Isn't that amazing? My new novel, Countdown to Mecca, I guarantee you will be a very big seller. It's a great book. Washington won't touch it. Because the Rush Cartel and the Murdoch Cartel are one and the same, and they don't want me. I mean, I'm I'm persona non grata in that in that cartel. Savage on the Alex Jones show. So I'm only accepted by a few outsiders. Alex Jones. You'll see the promotion is very minimal, except for this show. What's the difference? What's the difference at the end of the day? Does it really matter? I want some rock and roll, more Friday do up before I talk a little more. I have another a good one here that I want to play. I don't know which one. Do I want to hear uh, Lee Andrews, The uh, Teardrops, Lee, uh, Lee Andrew, Long Lonely Nights, Johnny and Joe Over the Mountain, Frankie Lyman, I Want You to Be My Girl, uh, The Treasure. I want to hear Clyde McFadden, The Treasure of Love. Oh. 
a Nielsen report. I, I'm, not allowed to, I'm not allowed to give ratings. In fact, if you even say Nielsen, you'd get fired. But this is a generic statement. Uh, radio reaches 242 million listeners a week. Could you believe that? The number one format of radio is country music. Number two is news talk. And Mexican regional is number 13. So I remember all of the radio people, they were going to do Spanish language. They all flopped. By and large, they flopped. This is still number one next to country. In English, by the way. I'm nothing against Spanish. I studied it for seven years. I couldn't, I couldn't relate to the language. I could relate to French because I like the literature better. Uh, the uh, the Spanish literature that I was forced to read, like Don Quixote, I didn't really get it. Tilting at windmills. I never understood that. It's a great metaphor, but so what? Then what? Then there were a few communist uh, writers from, from Chile. Like, I'm supposed to read them? Okay, great. That's a thousand years. And, uh, I love that was big in the year. Carlos Lorca. Big deal. Big deal. What do you want to talk about? You want to hear my dream? Am I ready for the dream yet? Let me have another sip of that energy drink. Uh, okay, so here's the dream. I have to do it in a family-oriented way. Now, remember, in advance, I am not responsible for my subconscious. I am responsible for my consciousness and my conscious, my conscious mind, and I have control over that. I really don't have any control over my subconscious. I, can't, I can top-load my subconscious by what I watch and what I w listen to. That's absolutely true. That is true. So I watch movies that are violent. My subconscious is affected. If I watch vivid lights flashing, that would affect my subconscious, etc. You know that. How I eat will affect my subconscious, what vitamins I take. So in that regard, we can, we can alter or, or let's say direct our subconscious. I also happen to know, this is a prelude, by the way, to the dream. You may not know this. Many people don't remember their dreams. I remember all of them, almost all of them, because I've trained myself on dream analysis since I'm about... 18 years old. In fact, at the family table, when the kids were growing up, I'd ask them what their dreams were the night before because I learned that from Native Americans. They were very deeply into dream analysis because they believed that there was more than one world, a conscious world, and so do I. So nevertheless, I had a dream last night, and I'll put it in, I'm going to make it as vivid as I can without being vulgar, but this was the dream. <clears throat> it was a white elephant that was blindfolded, not blind. It was blindfolded. It had a large blindfold over its eyes. And it couldn't get the blindfold off. And the elephant was just walking around, trampling around, sort of randomly. Didn't know where it was going. <laughs> what does that sound like to you? Along comes a donkey. Again, metaphorically, we know what that is. And as the elephant relieved himself, the donkey consumed the elephant dung. It was more vivid than that in my dream. That's as far as I can go. I'm not making this up. So I woke up and I said, what the heck was that dream? Well, it's really clear what it is. The blindfolded elephant is the Republican Party. The dung-eating uh, animal, whatever that was, the donkey, is the Democrat Party. They're recycling each other's garbage. Remember I told you that the way the game is played in this monopoly of ours, this dictatorship of ours, this benign dictatorship, which is not so benign anymore, uh, is that it's eight years Democrat, eight years Republican, eight years Democrat, eight years Republican. In other words, on a larger scale, it's the equivalent of what Baltimore has in the street gangs of the Crips and the Bloods. The Democrats and Republicans are two gangs. And the way they play the game is one takes control and rips off the Treasury more than the other. The other screams for eight years, how dare you do this? Why, the American people deserve more, you son of a gun. And then toward the end of the, the reign of the eight years of the repubs, you hear Rep the Dems are going to save us. That was Obama, right? He saved us. Oh, yeah, he saved us. Now that his reign is coming near an end, not soon enough for me, here we have the uh, contenders, pretenders out there saying, why, when we get rid of these liberal Democrats, socialists, we're going to save America. God bless America. Here comes the red. Here comes the white. Here comes the blue. And then we'll have them again doing that to us. Because you wake up and there's a trade deal now. And there's Obama trying to push a secret trade deal with Asia. And there's McConnell, who's on Obama's side, shafting the worker and the factory owner. And opposing it are some liberal Democrats who say it's a job killer. And they're 100% right. So you see the dream, right? Now, I have to paint the, the blindfolded white elephant 
at some point. My rendition of the White Owl was pretty good. That was a little more obscure than this dream of the White Elephant. But this one was a clear one. It's as simple as that. I I can't ask you to call me on that. What can you say about my dream? Why did I even tell you the dream? Because it's very political. Or else I wouldn't have bothered. Uh, Do we have an elephant sound? Can you dig up an elephant sound out of the encyclopedia of sound? That's what I love about radio is the sound effects. Because when I grew up, I loved seeing how... I went behind the scenes at Radio City Music Music Hall. And uh, my mother, God bless her soul, took me and my friend Alan to the NBC building. And they took us behind the scenes. And they showed us how radio is done. It was magical. Like when they shook... A large, thin piece of metal, it sounded like thunder, and I sat there awestruck. And he said, boys and girls, here's how we make the sound of horses' hooves. And he had two little things that he clapped like a horse on a thing. I was amazed that that you could create sound like that and make it sound so real on the radio. I was hooked forever, because I grew up in radio. I'm one of the lucky ones, which is why I have a natural talent for this business. And you know it. I mean, that's why you listen to the show. Savage on the Garland shooting. There's a link between the White House and ISIS. That was the headline. You want to get political? Go ahead. Here's my other headline. Fanatical Muslims try to kill scores. Shot dead by hero cop. Get my headline. I could always do that. Here's another one of my headlines. Even readers against Obama's trade treason, number three. That's all. Those are my headlines. What would you like to talk about? 855-400-7828 is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. No, no, on the, the bell. bell. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Such an obscure song uh, from Louis Prima. Crazy singer, crazy guy. Long gone, long gone. He's in heaven with the sturgeons. He may have actually gotten sturgeons in heaven. I don't know. Louis Prima was an American singer, actor, songwriter, and trumpeteer. Big, big hit in his days, but dead, gone. Died in 1978. When was he born? I always do the uh, the math now. I see when they died, then I go back to the birth, and I do the addition, and I see like, how long you're going to live. You ever do that now? I've been doing it since I'm t- like I'm 10. Inventors, I would see, like he invented the trumpet and he lived from 1701 to 1711. He was 10 years old when he died. <laughs> you ever see stuff like that? How could he have died at 10 if he invented the trumpet? No, I'm saying like he died 18. In those days, they didn't live long. They didn't have Prozac and they didn't have uh, sturgeon on, on, on bagels to keep them alive. And there was no Obamacare. They just died of the plague. What do you want to talk? I can't get into the whole political again. I can't do it. My heart's not in it. I gave you all the politics I can do for a while, for now. You know, I really, I'm serious. I feel like I'm overcoming a a mental illness dealing with politics. You got to be crazy to do this day and night. Yet I do it day and night. And I'm not a crazy. Unbelievable to me. I mean, you want me to do a little bit? All right, play clip one. Here's a little bit of it right now if you really want politics. Go ahead. Take there are away. those within the administration who go back to the 60s in mentality. Bring it all down, man. You know, then let's rebuild it in our own image. That's the, that's the communist view, the left-wing university view. Wreck it. Screw the patriarchy. Bring down the white man. You'll have paradise. That's one view. The other view is a bunch of morons who are college girls who know nothing, on drugs, raised on Adderall, parents who are psychotic. I can name three of them. Most of them speak for the Obama administration. One of them is the stupidest girl I've ever seen in my life. I call them Obama's sorority. They don't know what world they live in. They live in a sheltered bubble, and they think that they know the world. They know nothing. Oh, that's it's finished? That was from yesterday's appearance on The Jones Show. On the spot, 45 seconds of brilliance. And that was not scripted. See, that's the difference. You think you can do three hours of radio a day without a script. Try it. I'm gifted, and I'm lucky that I have the ability to to think on my feet and to express it all at once. 
But how long can this go on? I mean, I wake up with allergies like today. I couldn't believe what it does to my brain. Allergies are a disease, by the way. It's an illness, a real one. What it is is the jasmine is in bloom all over the place. I hate jasmine. I'm supposed to love it. My skin itches. My eyes tear. I can't think. So I had to take the pill and the uh, the energy drink. I got my energy back. But the thing is, how much politics can you take? That's why I'm playing sounds like mariachi music, donkeys, elephants, Louis Prima. I'm in the mood for sound. I feel like entertaining my brain with sound waves. Play a donkey for me. You got a donkey? <laughs> There you go. That's America's political party. In one That's it. Either the donkey or the blind elephant. Take your choice. What a system. Boy, the founding fathers really had it made, man. They figured it out. They, they created a monopoly that no one could break. You know, in a parliamentary system, you can have a number of parties. You could have a splinter party, a small one. I'd have a party. If we had a parliamentary system, I would have created the Nationalist Party. I'd get two to four points. I'd have a seat in parliament. And I'd have a voice. And in about 20 years, it would have a, um, a position in the country, maybe win. But they set it up where you can't do it. You, you start a third party, so you shaft one or the other. And the other one wins. Don't you understand how brilliant the founding fathers were? They created a monopoly. We need a parliamentary system in this country to survive. How's that one? You want politics? There, I gave you politics. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I got the stories, I got the sound, I got the angst. But what is the point? When you see McConnell, the gobbler, joining with Obama to give Obama exclusive authority for a trade deal with China that even Harry Reid opposes. Tell me why I should get agitated again. Tell me why. Tell me why I should get agitated when you have Benedict Arnolds like McConnell and Boehner running the Republican Party. Why should I give a rat's behind whether Ted Cruz or Schmedduz or Doofus runs on the Republican side? You got guys like Senator Cotton, who I really respect enormously. Look what they did to him. A war veteran, a conservative, and look what McConnell and Boehner did to him. Look what they did to the other young Turks that were elected in November. They put him at the back of the bus. They wouldn't even let him sit in the front rows during the State of the Union. And they warned them that if they try to conduct a coup against Boehner to replace him as a speaker, if they lost, he would cut their funding and throw them off committees, which is what he did. It's a fascist dictatorship. So what, one is better than the other? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, sure. Slow poison, fast poison. That's all. It's a locked system. So what am I supposed to do about it? Well, I have a radio show. I have to do certain things. I play rock and roll in the middle of the politics. Sometimes I get heavy. Sometimes I get light. Sometimes I have to go here. Sometimes I have to go there. And that's why I talked about some politics in the first hour. And I also talked about a dream I had about the, the white elephant with a blindfold on. What a dream. I mean, you got to give me credit for that one. Even if I'm making it up, which I'm not, it's very creative. Tell me who else could have come up with a blindfolded white elephant? Nobody in the history of radio ever. I don't know what they're on, man. I mean, just don't they, aren't they tapping into their subconscious? I am. So I have, here's my sound. I'm going to give you choices today. Make believe you're in a restaurant. I'm the, I'm the waiter. I'm Michael Savage and I'm the head waiter. I'm coming over to your table. Good evening, madam. Here is what's on the menu tonight. We have uh, cuts from Savage on the Alex Jones Show as an appetizer. We have Kamala Geller. Uh, I don't recommend that one unless you take it with a little briole or some Alka-Seltzer. So we'll skip that. I wouldn't recommend the Pamela Geller for today because it's a little stale. I can't guarantee that it's fresh. It's uh, fresh frozen. I would not recommend the Pamela Geller. On the menu today is uh, a Muslim on NBC 
who says that Islam should be protected from satire. I recommend you take that with some strictening. Also on the menu, we have Peter King, uh, who said we, we need more surveillance of people in the Muslim community. Try that, but make, be careful of that one. There may be some fish bones in it, because he doesn't really mean it. Then there's the Garland mayor saying there's no evidence of ISIS involvement in the attack, despite ISIS claiming responsibility. I would say take that with not only a grain of salt, but the whole salt shaker. We also have on our menu today Garland shopper, Shooter's attorney, that's the Muslim's attorney, saying there was no indication of terror. He just might have snapped. That's the lawyer. I'd recommend not taking that one. That fish is so old, I wouldn't serve it to a cat. Then we have this. Here's another thing. This is for the main course. You may want this on the menu today. Obama says young people like Trayvon Martin are just as talented as me, only they didn't get a chance. How's that for the big lie? Everyone's an Einstein. Trayvon Martin was waiting to become an Einstein. Does Obama know what he just said? Is, does he have any idea how idiotic this is to say Trayvon Martin was just like him? So he's telling us he's an undeserving idiot who was put in that position by forces so great that we couldn't even control it the second time. Listen to clip number 17. Try this for an appetizer. Over a year ago, we launched something we call My Brother's Keeper, an initiative to address those persistent opportunity gaps and ensure that all of our young people, but particularly yeah, right. young men of color, have a chance to go as far as their dreams will take them. Really? No young women of color? No Hispanics? Just black men? That's very fair of you, Mr. Obama. But it gets even worse in 18. Listen to this. It's an idea that we pursued in the wake of Trayvon Martin's death because we wanted it, the message sent from the White House in a sustained way that his life mattered, that yeah, right. the lives of the young men who are here today yeah, matter, right, 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 that we right, care right. about your future. Not yeah, just sometimes, right. but all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. You go to sleep every night thinking about men of color in the ghetto. Every time you fly away in another junket somewhere, every time you rake in another couple of million dollars from the rich white folk uh, somewhere in America, that's all you're thinking about is young men of color, right? It gets best now. Now, here's the best part. Here's the main course, clip 19. Try this, see if you can digest it. In every community in America, there are young people with incredible drive and talent. Sure. And they just don't have the same kinds of chances that oh, no. somebody like me had. No. They're just as talented as me, just as smart. They don't get a chance. See, he just told us that he's exactly equal to people wearing a hoodie in the ghetto, uh, only they don't have people pushing them the way he was pushed uh, by his white mother and his grandparents. Well, I mean, at least he admitted it. Just as smart. You know, you should play that again and then go to the Frito piece, Robert. I'm smart. In every community in America, there are young people with incredible drive and talent. Uh, when and they, they just don't like have that. the same drive. kinds of chances that... Yeah, Somebody like yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just yeah. as talented as me. Just as smart. They don't get a chance. Send Fredo off to do this. Send <laughs> Fredo off to do that. Let Fredo <laughs> take care of some Mickey Mouse nightclub somewhere. I can handle things. I'm smart. Not like everybody says. Like dumb. I'm smart and I want the steps. So we got Fredo in the White House now. I wish we had Sonny or Michael, but we got Fredo up there. They pushed Frito into the White House now. The gardener got in. Remember that movie, The Gardener, with Peter Sellers? He didn't want to be president. They made him president. I mean, that's what we have. This guy is amazing. Who wrote this for him? He spoke off the cuff, and he said that, uh, oh, God, I can't even say it again. We know what we have here. That's all. 855 is the phone number. I gave you the menu, the sound menu, and I gave you already the first course. So while you're digesting that uh, piece for your main course. Oh, we got more. We got more. We got Bill Clinton defending foreign donations to the foundation, saying he's got bills to pay. <laughs> now, I think we should save the Bill Clinton soundbite for dessert. Don't you, Robert? No. I think you needed to go with the uh, Obama. See, one thing is, Bill Clinton we know is smart. He is so devilishly smart that he can get away with absolute treason, selling off the uranium uh, mines in America and the uranium ore, rather, to Russia and telling us he, need, he did it in order to pay his bills. I love it. There'll be no investigation because he's, he's protected way high up. You try selling uranium ore to the Russians and see what happens. Uh, where is this one? Where does he say that um, he has bills to pay? Anyway, let's try. Here's 25, Bill Clinton. 
I don't think there's anything sinister in trying to get wealthy people and countries that are seriously involved in development to spend their money <laughs> wisely in a way that helps poor people and lifts <laughs> them up. I don't think there's anything bad with that. I think it's good. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the one thing you got to understand that in the third world, the rich people really think about the poor day and night. That's why in India, the, the poor people live in garbage dumps. You know, it's because the rich think only about them, not about slaughtering elephants to get ivory, not about raping the forests of Africa, not about their rapacious appetite for disgusting exhibitionist uh, trinkets. No, that's all the rich Chinese think about is the poor of China. That's right. That's why Bill has to do uh, business with them. And uh, here he goes again. Listen to clip 27 now of your president, Bill Clinton. I give 10% of my revenue off the top every year to the foundation. And Hillary, in the years she was there, gave 17. Over the last 15 years, I've taken almost no capital gains. What's it's the, the most independence I can get. If, if I had a business right, relationship... Well, you get the picture, somebody, right, right. No, he's going to tell you he ripped off the foundation. You know, you get him and say, no, I ripped off the foundation. I didn't take exactly money because then it would have been obscene. I would have gone to jail and I would have had to pay real taxes on it. Instead, I just used the foundation's income for airplane trips, hotels, staff, gifts for this one, that one. What, are you kidding me? I guess he's talking to people who are so gullible uh, that only Gulliver's Travels could describe them. Should have been written Gullible's Travels, which is, of course, what Jonathan Swift meant. But since I'm not Jonathan Swift... I must take a quick commercial break, and I shall return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. In too many places in this country, black boys and black men, mm -hmm. Latino boys, Latino men, yeah, they experience in being treated differently by law yeah, enforcement. Right, okay, you liar, you in you stops liar. and in arrests and in you charges and in incarcerations. The statistics are clear. Up and down. Oh, shut up, you hate monger. He's doing it again. He started up the riots in Ferguson. He started up the riots in Baltimore. Now he wants other cities to burn, baby, burn. So he says, in too many places, black boys and black men, Latino boys and Latino men, making them equal now, uh, are all lumped together, but they don't see themselves, by the way, lumped together, incidentally. I want you to answer this question as honestly as you can. As you drive around America, who do you see building the houses? Who are working on the construction sites? Ask yourself that question. And after you ask yourself that question, you'll answer yourself that question. The young Hispanic men are generally working day and night they're generally married, and they're generally fathers who stay home with their, who are there for the wives and children. Generally true. You will see the gangs glorified, but even the gang members are family men. Did you know that? See, that's something you don't understand that is a fundamental difference between the Hispanic community and others. But Obama, of course, if he can lump people of color together against white people, hey, that's his stock and trade. What a demagogue, man. You should be embarrassed having voted for this creep. What a demagogue. What a low-life scoundrel he is. He is no better than the worst scoundrel this country has ever seen. Well, he gets away with it because of you, not because of me. All right, let me take some calls. Edward on WDRC Radio. Go ahead, please. Make your point. You, animals that are not normally white that turn out to be white when they're born white are usually deaf. That's a known phenomenon in the animal world. Not just albinos, but just a white, like we have a white dog that's deaf. And you can look that up. It's kind of interesting. Your, your elephant not only is blindfolded, but he can't hear. That sounds like John Boehner and Mitch McConnell, doesn't it? That's what I'm saying. Well, look how my subconscious turned him into an elephant with a blindfold. A, a deaf and blind elephant. Yeah, but the rest of the dream is kind of vulgar if you look at it from the point of view of vulgarity, but it isn't if you look at it symbolically, which is the, you know, the, the elephant dung being consumed by the donkey is how the dream, you know, continued, which I found to be shocking, just totally shocking. I couldn't understand it. In fact, it was so disturbing, it woke me up. I try to get out of the dream. I, you ever get one of those dreams you want to get out of? Oh, yeah, I get them a lot. Not as much as I used to as I get older. 
Yeah, I'm well, I'm, I mean, my subconscious is working overtime. Let me send you a free copy of, uh, I haven't given one away today, Countdown to Mecca. It'll be out next week. I know many people who bought the earlier uh, Hatfield books, A Time for War and uh, Abuse of Power are going to buy it. And that'll be the end of the trilogy. And those characters are going to live on in movies. That's about it. I'm not writing anymore. I, I swear to you, that's it. I made that commitment yesterday. They're too hard mixed in with everything else. It's the third in the trilogy. It's the end of the three novels. Jack Hatfield doesn't die in the book, but he's not going to live with me again unless he... I made one commitment. If Hollywood produces a movie of one of these novels, in the next few years I might write a fourth. But otherwise, no. No more. Won't do it. So you better get your copy while you can. If you like Jack in Abuse of Power and you like Jack in, uh, and Doc... Countdown to Mecca. You're going to love them in, uh, in Countdown to Mecca, rather. Jack Hatfield, fearless San Francisco freelance journalist. Defrock, former host of the cable TV program Truth Tellers. Doc Matson, former soldier, current Merc, trusted ally of Jack. Dover Griffith, one-time Department of Naval Intelligence analyst, now FBI agent and Jack's girlfriend. Uh, Saul Minsky, San Francisco-based gangster. Rick, Minsky's driver and bodyguard. Carl Forsyth, FBI director. He was in the other novel. Russian national and assassin is Pieter Ansky, known as Peter Andrews. Then I got the generals. Then I got Anastasia Vincent, the Russian-born escort. Ritu, the Indian-born escort. Miwa, the Japanese-born escort. Daniel Jeffries, Helmut Schoenberg, and Bernie Peters, eccentric physicist, based in San Francisco. He's a good character, my crazy eccentric physicist who I invented based on nobody. Countdown to Mecca. You'll enjoy the book. It's good summer reading coming out next week. Maybe it'll make your early summer. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Rich on KSFO has a belly. Yeah, go ahead, Rich, go ahead, make your point. Mike, I want to thank you so much for the work that you're doing. All right, come on. Yeah, I know you want to be sarcastic. Make your point. You're trying to put me down. Go ahead. Go for it. On behalf of the Clinton campaign of spewing racism and bigotry. All right, you're giving me a generic statement. Show me what I said that's racist. Over 70% of communication is tone, of course. And oh, you don't like my tone? What are you, a, a mind cop? You idiot, you? What are you, a thought cop? When did you get your badge in thought policing? I appreciate your comedy. I appreciate... Your I don't know who you are. You're an unknown man who has nothing to do but listen to my show, so obviously you're a loser. Because if you were a real liberal, you wouldn't listen to me, right? Of course I would listen to you. Richard, what do you do for a living, Rich? You know what I do. What do you do? Writer, marketing expert. Oh, a marketing expert who has nothing to do during the day but call it a conservative talk show and put him down. Is that, that's your idea of marketing? I'm not, what was the last, what was the last uh, product you marketed? You're a successful... What was the last product you marketed, Rich? You know all about me. I'm on the internet. I've got a five-page write-up on Wikipedia. I'm a famous man with 25 books to my name. Who the hell are you, Rich? You do... Who are you, Rich? Tell us... Give us the name of one thing you've published, Rich. On behalf... Rich, I want to ask you again. Don't try to be too smart because you're not getting anywhere. I want you to name one book you have published, Rich, so we can all see how intelligent you are. Oh, what, what's happened, Rich? Rich, are you there? Savage to Rich. What happened to you, Rich? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Back to the Savage Nation. Playing some rock and roll from the great era of rock and roll before the lyrics became woman-hating and society-hating and gave us Barack Obama. How could a demagogue like this get away with this on a daily basis? A man who's had the, the skids greased for him from the time he was born. The skids were greased for Obama. He never identified with uh, black radicalism. He even said so in his own autobiography until he went to Columbia. And then he found out when he started to pr pretend he was a black radical, uh, he suddenly got the attention of all of the girls and the boys, the white idiots, and they started kissing his feet. And take a look, he rode this wave of white guilt all the way to the White House, and he continues to ride the wave of hatred right until the last drop is drunk. Again, stirring up the masses, 
being a catalyst for fire and hatred, unlike any president in history. It's unbelievable to me. You can only assume he's evil, diabolical and evil. Now, he doesn't look it and doesn't... See, you people are fooled by it because you think evil comes in a stereotypical form. You assume evil looks sinister. Sometimes the opposite is true. Some of the most evil people don't look evil. We've not learned that from mass murderers. So you got a race baiter like this, a man who would like to burn the country down, and he gets away with it because he doesn't look like he's doing it. That's how clever he is. Again, stirring up the masses. It wasn't enough what happened in Baltimore. He has to now go out on the road and do it again. He wants the next city to come up and fire. You think I'm making this up? Listen to clip 21. This is your president. Go ahead. 21. Those opportunity gaps begin early, often at birth, and then compound over time, becoming harder and harder to bridge, making too many young men and women feel like no matter how hard they try, they may never achieve their dreams. Really? Really? And why is that, Mr. Obama? How is it that certain uh, immigrant groups come here of color and they make it to the spelling bee within three months? Well, what's that about? How come Indians from India come to America, some of them as poor as poor can be, and within a few months they're winning American spelling bees, working for their degrees, master's degrees, PhDs, opening businesses? How do you explain that, Mr. Obama? Tell us about this um, opportunity gap. I mean, they are people of color by definition, aren't they? How come they don't bellyache about lost opportunity? How come they just, how come Asians come here? I think they're people of color, aren't they? They're certainly not Caucasian. How come Chinese people come to this country, some of them with nothing? Their grandfather was a laborer. The father is a humble worker or a God knows owned a little shop. And the kids achieve so much. How is that possible? How come that opportunity gap doesn't exist in the Chinese community? to the extent that it does in other communities. Can you answer that, Mr. Obama, in all honesty? Can you answer that question? You can't, and that's why you're stirring up the masses, because you are nothing but a demagogue. You're an embarrassment to the word president. Aren't you, aren't you embarrassed by what you've done in Ferguson and Baltimore? Must you burn other cities to the ground by telling all of those on the bottom who are no good, who are burning cities down, that they're good, really? That they're justified in burning cities down? You tell them they're justified now burning a city down? That's what you just said to them. Who's the racist here? Barack Obama. He's a racist from the core. I'll go to the, I'm going to go to the core. I don't even want to waste my time with this character. Kip on KVOR Radio. Welcome to the program. Please tell us what's on your mind. A few minutes ago, you made a uh, you made a point about who was actually building America and how on all the construction sites it was majorly uh, Hispanic. And I'm a construction worker in Colorado Springs, and being on these construction sites, I am the minority as a uh, as a Caucasian. So I'm able to uh, talk to a bunch of different people from all aspects of life, and um, any. Any Hispanics who I've met who were not from this country doing construction and have, you know, talked about just our our current issues that are going on with what almost seems to be an epidemic in the black culture, in my opinion, of expecting stuff for free and relying on the government, more or less. Um, you know, I just wanted to make a comment that almost every construction worker, white, Hispanic, and the few African Americans that I have met on construction sites do agree with the point that you made that, you know, this, it, it's, it's the culture in this black community and it's Barack Obama who's, who's completely getting everyone reliant on the government. And, uh, Kip, yeah. it's a hundred percent true. And truth is the best defense against attacks. Like I had on this radio show. I know what the Hispanic people are doing in this country. I know what they're thinking and I know what they're saying. I know it. I've lived here long enough to know what's going on, Kip. And for Obama to lump Hispanics in with blacks is an embarrassment because he knows better than that. First of all, the races don't particularly get along, incidentally. You know that as well, don't you? Absolutely, yes, sir. I mean, I mean, you want to be a realist? Why suddenly they're people of color. They're all bonded now. He's trying to lump them together to hate white people again. The man is a classic demagogue. It's frightening that he gets away with this. This is the kind of crap you would get from a low-grade sociology professor at a junior college. 
where there are no, 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 um, let us say, no one looking over their shoulder. So they, they push this left-wing garbage down the kids' throats, and the kids can't fight against it, and they can't say a word against it. Even the Hispanic kids can't rise up and say you're wrong because they're afraid they'll get an F. The man is like a junior college sociology professor, but unfortunately he's in the White House with a booming voice and a smooth delivery, and he owns the media. I couldn't it's, why, it's why I get agitated. I can't believe these lies. Amazing what people are believing and just how quick they are to believe it just because it comes out of his mouth and he promised change and just it's just I can't comprehend it. Well, I can comprehend it. They'll burn the country to the ground unless they're stopped. Kip, let me send you my new novel coming out next week, Countdown in Mecca. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. When it's out in the Spanish language, I'll let you know. Right now it's only in English for the uh, English uh, speaking and reading public. You know, I was reading about the demographics of America. Would you believe that the Caucasian race still represents something like 68% of the population in America? You wouldn't know that, according to Obama, would you? And he'll turn it around and say that. That's why there's no opportunity for the others. Did you know that? Did you know what percent of the population is white, what percent is black, what percent is Hispanic, and what percent is Asian in this country, according to the latest census? I, you know, if you turn the TV on, you'd think it's 50% black, 20% gay, uh, four, five percent lesbian, and uh, then there's one white kid allowed in, like a white kid with red hair, in the mix. That, that's what the idiots in Hollywood would have you believe is the racial makeup of the United States of America. I'm not. Go look at it. How about every ad that you turn on from the vermin on, on Madison Avenue? Look what they produce. Every white man is a moron and a loser, and the wife is the smart one. Everywhere you turn, there's either a black doctor or a black boss. Can you believe what this is? You know, it was bad enough for all the years that they denigrated blacks in the movies and on television. It was terrible. So the black community rose up and said, we want fairness, right? We want more African-Americans in movies. We want more African-Americans in TV commercials. Now you turn a commercial on. In every commercial, a black woman is the boss. Every show, the, 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 the judge is a black person. And the white man is, is either the villain or a moron. That's what Hollywood has done now. Is it any wonder that people hate them for distorting reality? Yeah, well, all right, that's the story. America's borders, language, and culture. It's not for everyone. Some people like lies, unadulterated lies coming out of the mouth of the demagogue with forked tongue. I didn't want to get too political today. I really didn't. I wanted to sail. I wanted to coast. I wanted to talk about dreams and metaphors. But unfortunately, I couldn't. So what I should do now is get a little more political. And what we're going to do now is play a, uh, a piece of <clears throat> my appearance yesterday on the Alex Jones show in clip two. The thing is this. We've been penetrated. We've been infiltrated. How high up it goes is anyone's guess. We know that the president's middle name is not Jesus. We know that the military has been told to stand down. We know the police have been told to stand down. We know that there's only one sacred religion in the United States of America, and it isn't the founding religion. It's the invasive religion. And the fact of the matter is, the FBI director who warned us six weeks ago, this was just before Hussein's uh, conference, anti-terrorism, counter-terrorism conference in Washington, where he invited Muslim groups, he disinvited the head of the FBI who said that ISIS is in 49 out of the 50 states. Why would he do that to the head of the FBI who warned us? There's only one answer. Someone in that team in the White House is playing for the other side. They're not on our side. The good news is the beefy Texas cops killed the scum. They, they wiped the scum off the planet and sent them to heaven where they can go rape, go rape babies. I guess that's their reward. They get to rape 72 ra babies in the next world. What a, what a religion. Isn't that great? Kill someone on this planet so you can rape 72 infants in the next world. Doesn't CNN find that uh, obscene and pornographic and sickening? We know we're at war. They've been at war with us for a thousand years. The president has been, been at war with America for the time he, uh, I guess, what, left Colombia and discovered his Afro roots. When he was a kid, he didn't identify with his radical side. Read his own autobiography. Then he found out that by acting like a black radical, everyone kissed his feet. And look where he is today, so why should he stop now? He wasn't a radicalized young man. 
But he found out that the white people fell on their feet the minute he acted out the uh, Black Panther uh, game. Look where he is now. Why should he stop now? He has that scum, Al Sharpton, in the White House 50 times and no one says a word. The anti-police scum, Alex, uh, this is, I get apoplectic over this. Can you imagine if a right-wing president had won the presidency in 08 and shortly after winning, he invites the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan in and out of the White House for six years? Tell me what the vermin at CNN and MSNBC would be saying. Al Sharpton is the equivalent of the Ku Klux Klan on the other side. One man's opinion. One man's opinion. And that's what I did yesterday. The time now is 46 minutes after the uh, hour. Uh, let's take a call. Rachel, a woman is calling one of the 25 Savagettes who listen to the show across America. Rachel on WMAL, welcome to the uh, Savage Nation. What's on your mind? A little while ago you were talking about the evilness in people, and I wanted to make a, um, a parallel observation between literature and today's society. William Golding wrote a book, Lord of Flies, which most everybody reads in high school, and he uses it as a moral analogy between about uh, good and evil, and the theme being people are innately evil. If given the chance, they will be evil and commit horrible acts of crime. And I want to know what you thought about that. Um, because yeah, no, the, that Okay, so Lord of the Flies was a metaphor where um, a, a plane crashes or a boat, all the adults are killed, and the only survivors are boys on this island. So they try to create their own island, and they become uh, debased and horrible to each other. They burn, uh, I think, fatty or squeaky. To, don't they burn them alive in that in that movie? Right, right. And and and, and the story uh, is telling us that children are inherently animals, and unless they have adults to guide them, they will revert to being animals. Isn't that more or less uh, uh, what you what you see? The story is telling. He used the children as an analogy to every, uh, even adults in society, saying that. Right. So, in other words, a society needs guidance. Where does the guidance traditionally come from? As hypocritical as religion may be, they set up the rules: right from wrong, green light, red light, yellow light. And so, when religion was destroyed slowly but surely, brick by brick, by the radical gay movement to start with against the Catholic Church, they took the Catholic Church down first. Because the Catholic Church was the bulwark of Christianity in the sense of being moralistic, bombastic, and very severe, they took the church apart brick by brick, and then they went after the other churches. And now look at where we are today. So the church is gone. The schools are gone. Who are the role models for the children? Uh, uh, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg and their characters in Hollywood. And so look what the children are doing. Yeah. Take a look at what children are doing today. Pornography at age nine showing each other's private parts on Instagram. Do you know what's going on with the children today on the Internet, what they're doing? They are Hello? Ra Rachel, so, so wouldn't you agree with me that children fundamentally have no knowledge of what the world should be like unless they are taught this by parents or by the church? Oh, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a teacher, so I see it every day. They're extremely influenced. Right. Please stay on the line. Yes, the children are inherently lost without guidance. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You want to talk about cartoons? What would the cartoon be of Barack Obama? How about a cartoon contest of the real Barack Obama? It would be a, a two-panel cartoon. One would be the smiling, smooth president. The next panel would be the real Barack Obama and what he's really saying, shorn of the smooth delivery. How's that for a cartoon contest? Like that one? Well, anyway, you get the picture. I can see right through him. It's like the king has no clothes. The king has no, no heart and soul as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the hard data on Obama is pretty ugly. Instead of talking about the Muslims who try to execute people exercising First Amendment rights in Texas, he goes out there and he gives speeches again about the downtrodden minorities in the, in the ghettos and they had a right to burn the communities down. You hear this? Now, what president would do this in a, in a Western nation? There's not a president of a Western nation that would do this after a city was torched. Go out and appease the minority group and tell them they had a right to, a, to torch the city. Literally, literally inviting them to do it again? 
beyond belief. It's unbelievable to me. And there's another subtext to this that I'll tell you about. How about black immigrants, like African immigrants, who come here and do very well in this country? Can anyone explain that to me? Have you ever studied that element of the African community in America? Why is it that Africans who come here from Africa don't seem to get trapped up in the ghetto mentality? How is that possible? Why is that so? Because they've not been brainwashed by the white liberals and the media in the schools to believe themselves to be incapable of advancing in the greatest country on earth. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. But I would also raise questions about the larger context in the United States and whether or not uh, we are applying a double standard to what is considered hate speech Mm -hmm. when it comes to Muslims. I feel that sometimes Muslims in America have become the last group in which public officials, organizations and others uh, are allowed to publicly demean, ridicule this group uh, in ways that we don't do it with uh, with other groups per se. Well, what he's calling for is hate speech laws against criticizing Islam. It wasn't in there. And he's a spokesmouth, of course, for the anti-American MSNBC. The home of all the refuse of the uh, media is MSNBC. The last resort for all racists and bigots is uh, on MSNBC, as exemplified by the leader of the pack, none other than Al Sharpton, a man who, in my estimation, should have been in prison 20 years ago for what he has done, instead is rewarded with 50 visits to the White House uh, because fundamentally the president and he are one and the same with... uh, let us say, different delivery systems. So now we have MSNBC with a Muslim spokesmouth on it saying that, well, you know, the religion is picked on, and so Islam should be protected from satire. Yeah, but he's a journalist, and uh, he's fair-minded. But it should be protected. The other religions don't need protection. Well, how about the Brooklyn Museum doing Piss Christ in the 90s, Mr. Muslim commentator on MSNBC? You may have been a wee lad at that point in a madrasa somewhere in Brooklyn or at Harvard, for all I know, in a a nursery school. But you see, there was an evil anti-Christian at at the Brooklyn Museum who thought it was fine for an exhibit called Piss Christ, where a crucifix was immersed in a jar of urine. Catholics were appalled, but being Catholics in America, they didn't get AK-47s and body armor. They didn't burn down the museum or attack it. They protested in the way we do it in America, something you don't know from your home countries. You just kill anybody who you don't agree with. That's not how it's done in America. And there's only one congressman who's speaking out, and that's Peter King, who I have mixed feelings about. You know, on one hand, he says the right thing. The next day, he attacks the Tea Party. Listen to clip 14. I do believe in having more surveillance of people in the Muslim community, because that's where the threat comes from. But it's difficult to do. And uh, certainly if it's done too often, the courts can claim that this is unconstitutional interference. Yeah, it's the Trojan horse, in other words. They're using the Trojan horse of religion to penetrate America and destroy us from within. Any sane nation could see that. But we don't have a sane nation. We have an insane nation with cowards leading the country. So that's the story. It's that simple. What else is in the news? Uh, Oh, there's a lot in the news. My God, there's so much in the news. But I don't know that I want to do it. Nor do I want you to know you. I mean, I don't think you want me to do it. So ISIS says that they had their first attack in America. The Garland mayor says that it has nothing to do with ISIS, even though they said they did. Listen to clip 15 on the Savage Nation. Well, I think it would be very easy for them to take claim and still have nothing to do with it. I I have no way of knowing. Um, Certainly, I don't know of any evidence that links them to actually having had a part in this. He may be right. They're just saying, oh, we did it to show that they're all powerful, you know. He's probably right. But here's the odd part about the uh, Muslim shooting in, uh, in, in Texas. We read that the Texas shooter, the Muslim, had been monitored by the FBI since 2006, 
Wow, let's see, that's nine years? What do you mean monitored? So he was working for them? Why in these nine years, if Elton Simpson, the Muslim convert, the African-American Muslim convert, Elton Simpson, uh, was being monitored by the FBI, how did Mr. Simpson and Sufi get AK-47s and, and body armor? And how come the, the great FBI didn't notice that? What do they think they're buying it for? Well, what were they buying uh, rifles and, and body armor for? What, an FBI? That's one way to look at it, that they're incompetent, but I don't think they're incompetent, by the way. Oh, oh, crossing the old divide as I did on the Boston Marathon bombing when we with our own eyes saw men in black walking around with knapsacks and antennae before the bombing in Boston, and yet they said it was all Sarnoff, who also had been monitored for many years. So they were monitoring Sarnoff. There were men with black knapsacks and antennae walking around before the Boston Marathon bombing, and they had nothing to do with the bombing, and they knew nothing about Sarnoff before the bombing, and now they don't know anything about Elton Simpson before the bombing. Only after the bombing, they tell us they were monitoring him. See, this is what leads to conspiracy theories, that the establishment is so has created such a police state, such a monstrous police state, DHS, uh, I don't know the agencies anymore, millions of men and women with guns with nothing to do. So every once in a while, they have to set a fire. That's what some people are saying. You know, there were old stories of firemen who would set fires because they had nothing to do. Fat pensions, laying in firehouses, eating bacon and eggs and having heart attacks. That was 30 years ago. Then they, got, then they went to granola and vegan diets. And they live forever on their pensions now, taking a second job. How many fire departments do you really need? Well, what's with the fat pensions with firemen all of a sudden? Why is it the most coveted position in San Francisco for a lesbian woman to become a firewoman? Why is that? What, because they really want to put out fires all their lives while they were putting on uh, men outfits they wanted to really be firemen? Do you really think that? Fat pensions, $500,000 a year, you hear this? And during the last blaze in San Francisco, the leader, uh, Mary Jo, I forget her name, she was in the back, her, suit, her white uniform didn't have a piece of soot on it after the fire. She was at a command post with her girlfriends uh, two blocks away, commanding the the, the, the fire. Why don't we have some volunteer fire departments and cut back on the pensions? Buy them out, and that's the end of it. Close down half the firehouses. How'd this turn into such a boondoggle? You talk about civil service jobs, my God. Now, I don't think I'm attacking firemen. A lot of them like the show, but look, let's be clear. You know there are no, not enough fires to justify all of the fire uh, houses and the fire trucks. So in the past, once in a while, one of your brethren would set a fire. So the next time, we go, oh, we got to have another because of that fire over on Latourne Road. We had a fire on Latrine Road just the other day where I suggest we add three more men to the firehouse and up their pensions because we can't compete with the private sector. So some are saying that the police agencies, the federal police agencies are doing the same, starting fires in the form of little terrorist attacks uh, like this. I, I don't know what to believe. Truthfully, how would I know? You know, you could believe anything. You can believe, oh, yes, they're doing it. Oh, no, they're not doing it. No, they wouldn't do it because they're above They're above that. Yeah, they're above that? Yeah. Yeah, well, let me explain something to you. Uh, there's a famous saying from an old movie. He has larceny in his heart. You ever hear that one? He has larceny in his heart. That would be Obama. That would be Bill Clinton. They have larceny in their heart. Every last one of those louts at the top. That goes for McConnell. That goes for the Republicrats just as well. Don't think I'm telling you there's a, a, a happiness is just around the corner if you elect a Republican. Please, please don't tell me that, for God's sakes. So here we are. What do you want to talk about on the Savage Nation? Lots of stuff uh, to talk about. Let's go to WABC. I've been taking a caller out of New York. Mark on WABC in New York City. Welcome. What's on your mind? Yeah, I just wanted to speak about what you mentioned earlier with President Obama sp speaking about how black people, white Americans have different opportunities and stuff. And I wanted to mention, uh, I've been going to school in the New York City public school system and a graduate school, undergraduate school, and every single one of the top classes in the programs always had some kind of black immigrant, either from uh, Africa, Haiti, Ghana, name, name the country. There's always achievers, overachievers, they're highly motivated. So I don't think it has to do with the race. 
per se. I think maybe he is like starting some kind of tension that doesn't need to be started. Maybe he's yeah, it, ha it has to do with the culture that they come from, not the racial stock, the culture. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's what we're saying, Mark. That's all we're saying here. I know that. Yeah. Mark, what are you studying in graduate school, Mark? In pharmacy school. Oh, good for you. It's not an easy... People don't understand how hard that really is. It's not that easy a slam dunk. No, not what it used to be. No. I, you know that I... You won't believe this. I was once a pharmacist's assistant as a little kid in Queens, New York. You know that they used to actually make... Um, prescriptions with a mortar and pestle in those days? Oh, yeah? I swear, I don't mean all of them. I mean, most of it was pills counting out of a jar. But once in a while, an old-fashioned doctor would give a prescription, and the pharmacist would have to mix things up with a mortar and pestle. Would you believe it? We still do that sometimes. Really? Is that true? They still do? What kind of chemicals do they call for? Do you know? The, the process is called compounding pharmacy. Um, there are a bunch of different things you put in. depends on the prescription. What do you mean? Like sulfur might still be a, one of those uh, compounded ingredients? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I suffered from, uh, if I had a little cold sore that got out of control, the doctor gave, in those days you can't get it anymore. It was, oh, what was it? It was spirits of camphor on a, um, I'll bet you're going to finish this for me. You took a, 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 a what are you a Q-tip. You dipped it into spirits of camphor, which burn like heck, and you dipped that into sulfur powder, and you applied that to the cold sore. It burnt it right off your face in about a day. Do you know that? Yeah, we use something else now for the cold sore, but we use camphor for other things. Camphor. I'm sorry. Yeah, camphor is very powerful. It was spirits of camphor with sulfur. That's what we use. But there's over-the-counter preps, which literally combine those two elements more or less but sulfur isn't used anymore hey mark let me send you a copy of my novel i'm sure you'll enjoy reading it while counting out pills countdown to mecca it goes along with counting pill <laughs> oh the count right now is 17 minutes after the hour i'll be right back Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Right, here's a nice headline on the Drudge Report. Feds approve ferry service to Cuba. Isn't that nice? I mean, if you want to bring in illegal aliens or contraband, what could be better than a ferry? Now you don't have to fly it in. You just float it in. That's all. What could be better? I started out to go to Cuba. Now it's going to be easy. Feds approve ferry service to Cuba. Isn't that wonderful? You know, it's nice to have a liberal as a president because it's all for the good of mankind. Look at Bill Clinton, how much good he's done and how well he's doing indeed. I mean, Bill Clinton didn't raise money for himself or the family. Those big speeches for half a mil here, seven fifty there. It's for the betterment of poor Africans and Asians because they need him. They, they need the great white father of Bill Clinton to save them. They can't do it on their own. And that's why Bill Clinton raises the money. He gives his revenue away. You know. Listen to clip 25 of your friend Bill Clinton, how good he is. I don't think there's anything sinister in trying to get wealthy people and countries that are seriously involved in development <laughs> to spend their money wisely in a way that helps poor people and lifts them up. I don't think there's anything <laughs> bad with that. I think it's good. <laughs> how come he has that voice? He's such a P.T. Bonham. Are you kidding me? Wealthy people in countries which are seriously involved in development? Every word is jargon. To spend their money wisely, like on Gulfstream 650s, trips to the brothel capitals of Europe, uh, the best of champagne, jewelry, diamonds, elephant tusks. And that, that helps poor people. When you think about it, if you're a, a, a bourgeois Chinese and you've made a fortune, however you've made it, why not have the poor people of Africa slaughter elephants and waste entire herds so you can have a little trinket in your living room that you can show off to your other pig friends a nice piece of ivory. What do you care about the elephants? Because if, if you follow Bill Clinton's illogic on this, he's helping all the poor Africans who slaughter el uh, uh, elephants. Think of the money they're making killing an elephant. Those tusks are very valuable. It doesn't matter if they cut the tusks off while the mother elephant is dying slowly 
in agony on the ground while her babies are crying and run off into the woods to be devoured by tiger, by lions? No, what matters is that the poor African who slaughters the elephant made some money off the tusks and that the bourgeois Chinese, the middle class, which were as garish as the Americans in the 1950s, if not worse, have a nice elephant tusk carved into something of ivory uh, on uh, for their living room. And look at all of the poor people who benefited from that work. And that's why I say Bill Clinton's not really lying to you when he says to you that uh, there's nothing sinister in trying to get wealthy people in countries which are seriously involved in development to spend their money wisely that helps poor people. He's only telling it like it is. Now listen to how good he is in clip 27. It gets even better. I give 10% of my revenue off the top every year to the foundation. And Hillary, in the years she was there, gave 17. Over the last 15 years, I've taken almost no capital gains. What it's the most man. independence I can get. Wow. If, if I had a business relationship with somebody, they would have a target on their back from the day they did business with me till the end. Any kind of disclosure is a target. And, and, but it looks bad. There's no facts, of course. No, of course not, because there's no investigation. None whatsoever. Now, there are, there are grounds for a Justice Department investigation, but that's, that's oxymoronic. We have no Justice Department. We don't have a Justice Department. We have a Civil Rights Division under Obama that goes out only after people who oppose Obama and his liberal socialist policies. So you think they're going to investigate? You try having a foundation as rich as that uh, that you live off in soft ways and tell me if you can get away with it. Sinister isn't even the word for it. 855-407-282. Quick call. K-E-R-N in Kern County in Southern California. Right near that mountain pass to L.A. David, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, you uh, mentioned that you had a dream earlier in the show, and I was just going to give you a, a, my instinctive quick interpretation. All right, I had a dream about a white elephant that was blindfolded, that was wandering around aimlessly, and a donkey was behind it consuming its uh, its its waste. It's, okay. it's, dung. it's dung. It was an ugly dream, but I didn't create it. I just... Had it, okay, so I, I can't blame myself. So what does the dream uh, mean to you? It's, it's foreshadowing. It's a lesson of what has happened, and it's foreshadowing what's to come. The Bush administration is the elephant, and it took a big dump, proverbial dump, on the country. And the donkey ingesting it is the Democratic Party absorbing everything that Bush, the Bush administration has left behind. With Obama increasing the, you know, extending the Patriot Act, increasing troop uh, uh, surges in in the Middle East, uh, increasing NSA back. Right, and 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 but to add to fuel to fire, he's now stirring up civil unrest from city to city. On top of it all, see what it because is. he want he wants to leave the Republicans who are likely to win with a mess they cannot clean up. The man wants to sack the nation so that they can have eight years of blaming the Republicans, and we the people are stuck without representation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. What's somewhere else? They're on the Wallbangers channel now. I don't know. They want to listen to racism, this, that, Ferguson, Baltimore. I could care less. I'm so sick of it all, I'll be honest with you. And I've said this before. They're never going to convert to Islam. I, I don't think you understand what I just said to you. Catholicism is so deeply rooted in the Hispanic people. Could you actually believe that Muslims are going to convert them to their religion? No. And I was on the beach down in, uh, I was near uh, Manhattan Beach in L.A. about a month ago, two months ago, standing on a boardwalk. It was actually the Hermosa Beach boardwalk. And I looked down on the beach, and I saw the families, the white families, the black families, the Hispanic families, and I saw the men with their wives and children on that beach. And I looked at them. I just watched them leaning over the rail, you know, watching the world go by. I observed. And I had a good feeling about the future of America. I said, the family is so strong in the Hispanic culture. They're not going to let anyone rip their religion away from them because their religion is the glue that holds their family together. I don't think anyone's expressed that as succinctly as I have on the radio. I'm sure it's been written. I'm sure people have kind of suggested it. That's a good thing. I don't want to just sit here, everything's bad. Nothing's good. America's dead. I don't believe it, by the way. 
America is changing. America will change. Everything changes. Nothing remains the same. I get that. We're going through a huge social upheaval because of the demon in the White House. The least of our problems are the Hispanics, by the way. This is an astonishing story that I'm about to tell you. It is an astonishing story that I'm about to tell you. There's a trade deal that the trader in the White House is trying to push right now with the help of the Republicans. They're all traders. This deal is such a sellout for America that even Harry Reid opposes it. I swear to God, this is something you'll never never believe in a million years. Harry Reid throws brakes on Obama trade push is the headline on Fox News. My headline is a little different. Trade treason is what I call it. Senate Democratic leader Harry Reid is jamming up President Obama's push for a new comprehensive trade deal, saying he'll try to block it until the Senate tackles other hot-button issues. Now, what this trade deal is, no one really knows, but they kind of know. It's a sellout of the American worker by Obama and the Republicans. This is amazing. Think about what I'm saying to you. The Republicans under Obama, and Obama, the Republicans and Obama, rather, want to give Asia a trade deal that will destroy us completely. And the only ones stopping it are the Democrats for reasons that are their own, probably because they have to go back to the workers in their communities and explain to them why they eroded the working man once again. But listen to this. you got to listen to this Senate leader Mitch McConnell, you know, the gobbler, the guy who looks like a turkey with the gullet hanging down from the chin. This guy is one of the worst... Benedict Arnold's in the history of America. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, the gobbler, urged his Republican colleagues to support Obama's trade push. And here's what he said. He said, of course, we've already heard of an attempt to stand in the way of the bipartisan effort to debate this legislation. We already heard of yet another effort to make a partisan stand against the bipartisan accomplishment that would help grow opportunities for our constituents. He means the lobbyists. The only opportunities that will grow are those pushed by the Better Business Bureau and the few companies that will benefit from this. You see, Obama is pushing a 12-nation agreement known as the TransPAC Partnership, which would open markets around the Pacific Rim to U.S. exports. On the face of it, that sounds good, but that's not exactly what it really is. Because to complete this deal... It's a little complicated, so I'll stop. I'll make it one sense. To complete this deal, Obama has to win expanded negotiating authority from the U.S. Congress. And who is opposing him? Liberals and labor unions who say they fear the loss of American jobs. I'm with the liberals and labor unions on this. I'm totally opposed to the Republican big businessmen on this. I'm sorry. What, do I have to go party line? I'm not in the rush cartel. I call them as I see them. It's that simple. A conspiracy theorist of 10 years ago is a mainstreamer today. You know that. Virtually everything that conspiracy theorists proposed 10 years ago was happening to the country. I'll give you four examples. You can give me some. Back when I was in radio in the 90s, mid-90s, we opposed NAFTA. We said it would destroy jobs in America. We said it would destroy factories in America. We said it would bring illegal aliens and drugs into America. Were we wrong or were we right? The North American Free Trade Agreement destroyed decimated the industrial base of America, decimated us, exported jobs, exported factories. We were not wrong. Remember the World Trade Organization, the WTO? Has that worked out for America? No. No, it's weakened American manufacturing. This is just a continuation of the weakening and hollowing out of Obama's secret trade pact. Do you know it's so secret right now that even Nancy Pelosi opposes it? I swear to God. The secrecy surrounding Obama's treasonous trade pact is such that the lawmakers who are allowed to look at the bill have to go into the basement of the building where it's uh, where the documents are hidden. They uh, cannot take their notes with them. They're not allowed to discuss the details with the of, with the public. Can you imagine a president as degenerate as this, a man as retrograde as this, a man as demonic as this? A man as fascistic as this getting away with this? Sure you can. Why? Because except for a few websites and a few radio shows, no one is telling you how demonic the man really is. The U.S. ran more than $50 billion in a trade deficit last month. $50 billion in one month, and this guy wants to give away what's left. You hear this? 
All right, you're not interested in this. I know, I know the emotional topics. I get it. I know what people call about. You want to talk more about the Texas shooting? What more do I have to say than I already said yesterday? Thank God for the Texas traffic cop who, despite the fact that he's being shot at by Muslims with machine guns. Ooh, did I say Muslims? Why did I have to say Muslims? Oh, that is so politically insensitive of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because they were doing it because they were Muslims. At least they said so, so maybe they were wrong. Anyway, the Muslims with machine guns came out blasting. Uh, and this guy had a handgun, shot them both dead with headshots. Bang, 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 bang. We don't know if it was two shots or four, but the Muslims with the machine guns went to the Sturgeons. They got the 72 Sturgeons they were promised. That's for sure. And we avoided a trial and we, we avoided a bloodbath. How do you feel about Hussein Obama triggering all these things in this country? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about CNN taking the side of the Islamics who want to take away our freedom of speech? I want to remind you of something. I'm the only American talk show host, actually the only member of the American media that I know of banned from entering Britain. Since 2009, I cannot enter this, the nation of Britain. Uh, and that is because, well, and it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible loss for me because I can't get the dental care that I want and I can't get the cuisine that England is famous for. And I've been wanting since 2009, it's been many years now, to go over there for some dental work in their socialized dental plan and go over there and get some great English cuisine. I mean, I can't get fish and chips here. But on a more serious note, I am banned from entering England for things I didn't really say, but they allege that I said about Muslims and Islam. Of course, I was a thousand percent right then and I'm a thousand percent right now. Has the English government apologized to me? Have they paid me reparations for denying me this dental care all these years? No. But there's a bigger point to the story is I'm very familiar with freedom, with what freedom of speech is. I'm the only uh, member of the talk show world who has won the freedom of speech award. Well, maybe. No, that's not true. Some of them have, have bought it. I mean, I'm sorry. Some of their syndicators bought it for them. That's right. I'm sorry. I was wrong about that. How do you feel about this? Do you feel that the um, organizer of the end, Pamela Geller, got what she deserved? She did this because she dared say, draw a picture of Muhammad? Now, I do remember when the vermin, excuse me, the Salenterites on the left, put Jesus Christ, the statue of Jesus Christ, in a jar of urine at the Brooklyn Museum a number of years ago, and the the uh, museum director giggled over it, saying it's freedom of speech. They teeheed over it. Well, it was freedom of speech. It was an artist. An artist could put Jesus in a, in a bottle of urine. Nobody burned anything down. Christians didn't put on body armor and get AKs and go shoot up the Brooklyn Museum because they're civilized people. We are not dealing with civilized people. We're dealing with, oh, use any expletive if you'd like. You know the whole story, right? One of two Garland, Texas shooting suspects identified. Muslim converts. African Americans converted in prison. Why in the world they permit this to go on in our prisons is not a, not, not a story I don't understand. I know exactly what it is. It's a recruiting ground. A recruiting ground. A recruiting ground. Who was the shooter? Elton Simpson. Another, another prize from the gutters of America. Garland shooting suspect Elton Simpson's father said, my son made a bad choice. You hear this? The father of one of the suspected Islamic gunmen in the Garland, Texas shooting told ABC News that his son made a bad choice. Dunstan Simpson said, we are Americans and we believe in America. What my son did today reflects very badly on my family. I wonder why I didn't say that before. Dunstan Simpson said his son, the murderous Islamist who is now in heaven raping infants, worked at a dentist's office but was on vacation for the last few weeks and the two last spoke three weeks ago. In other words, the father knew nothing. He dummied up. All the parents, are, uh, every time there's an Islamic attack in America, the parents say he was a good boy. We had no idea he was radical. We thought he was a regular guy who cleaned teeth. The elder Simpson said that while he was a strict father, Elton was always a good kid. Meanwhile, followers of ISIS had been sending messages about the event in Texas for more than a week, calling for attacks. One referenced January's Charlie Hebdo massacre in France and said it was time for brothers in the United States to do their part. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. It is the Savage Nation. I talked about some politics, and I also talked about a dream I had about the the white elephant with a blindfold on. What a dream. I mean, you got to give me credit for that one. Even if I'm making it up, which I'm not, it's very creative. Tell me who else could have come up with a blindfolded white elephant? Nobody in the history of radio ever. I don't know what they're on, man. I mean, just don't they, aren't they tapping into their subconscious? I am. So I have, here's my sound. I'm going to give you choices today. Make believe you're in a restaurant. I'm the, I'm the waiter. I'm Michael Savage, and I'm the head waiter. I'm coming over to your table. Good evening, madam. Here is what's on the menu tonight. We have uh, cuts from Savage on the Alex Jones Show as an appetizer. We have Kamala Geller. Uh, I don't recommend that one unless you take it with a little briol or some Alka-Seltzer, so we'll skip that. I wouldn't recommend the Pamela Geller for today because it's a little stale. I can't guarantee that it's fresh. It's uh, fresh frozen. I would not recommend the Pamela Geller. On the menu today is uh, a Muslim on NBC who says that Islam should be protected from satire. I recommend you take that with some strychnine. Also on the menu, we have Peter King. Uh, who said we we need more surveillance of people in the Muslim community. Try that, but make, be careful of that one. There may be some fish bones in it, because he doesn't really mean it. And then there's the Garland mayor saying there's no evidence of ISIS involvement in the attack, despite ISIS claiming responsibility. I would say take that with not only a grain of salt, but the whole salt shaker. We also have on our menu today Garland shopper, shooter's attorney. That's the Muslim's attorney saying there was no indication of terror. He just might have snapped. That's the lawyer. I'd recommend not taking that one. That fish is so old, I wouldn't serve it to a cat. Then we have this. Here's another thing. This is for the main course. You may want this on the menu today. Obama says young people like Trayvon Martin are just as talented as me, only they didn't get a chance. How's that for the big lie? Everyone's an Einstein. Trayvon Martin was waiting to become an Einstein. Does Obama know what he just said? Is, does he have any idea how idiotic this is to say Trayvon Martin was just like him? So he's telling us he's an undeserving idiot who was put in that position by forces so great that we couldn't even control it the second time. Listen to clip number 17. Try this for an appetizer. Over a year ago, we launched something we call My Brother's Keeper, an initiative to address those persistent opportunity gaps and ensure that all of our young people, but particularly yeah, right. young men of color, right. have a chance to go as far as their dreams will take them. Really? No young women of color? No Hispanics? Just black men? That's very fair of you, Mr. Obama. But it gets even worse in 18. Listen to this. It's an idea that we pursued in the wake of Trayvon Martin's death because we wanted it, the message sent from the White House in a sustained way that his life mattered, that yeah, right. the lives of the young men who are here today yeah, matter, right, 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 that we right, care right. about your future. Not just right, sometimes, right. but all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. You go to sleep every night thinking about men of color in the ghetto. Every time you fly away in another junket somewhere, every time you rake in another couple of million dollars from the rich white folk uh, somewhere in America, that's all you're thinking about is young men of color, right? It gets best now. Now, here's the best part. Here's the main course, clip 19. Try this. See if you can digest it. In every community in America, there are young people with incredible drive and talent. Sure. And they just don't have the same kinds of chances that oh, no. somebody like me had. No. They're just as talented as me. Just as smart. They don't get a chance. See, he just told us that he's exactly equal to people wearing a hoodie in the ghetto, uh, only they don't have people pushing them the way he was pushed uh, by his white mother and his grandparents. Well, I mean, at least he admitted it. They pushed Frito into the White House now. The gardener got in. I want to shift, though, to something entirely different. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion, and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca. It's a gripping page turner. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. 